Africa magazine and I'm here at the Maslow in Santon to talk to one of the most under pressure ministers in African politics right now. We're here to talk to Praveen Gordhan, the South African finance minister who's making a stand for fiscal discipline. So breaking news overnight, the president of South Africa has decided to pay back the money that the uh, Constitutional Court said he owned for his Nkandla residence. What's your reaction to that? Well, uh, the president is complying with the order of the Constitutional Court, and uh, that's a matter between him and, and the court. And um, a lot of people are talking uh, currently about, about yourself. Foreign investors around the world, and I talk to a lot of them, are saying that if your position is anyway threatened, or if any way that move that they're going to turn away from South Africa. What, what's your view on that? I think ultimately South Africa over the last 20 odd years has built uh, reasonably good and resilient uh, institutions. And uh, at the end of the day, all of us come and go. It's what institutional capability you leave behind. It's the sustainability of those institutions, the professionalism, the values and the culture that you instill in them. And I think the, the world uh, will recognize that in, in, in time. So what they're looking for is not the individual so much, as much as what drives institutions, uh, and in the case of investors, whether they have the levels of certainty and confidence uh, that would be required of any country in the world. And I think that it's possible for us, uh, South Africa, notwithstanding all the political noise which happens in every country, uh, to reach that point where we can give that kind of confidence. There's been a lot of political noise here and the papers were saying just two weeks ago that you were going to be arrested at any moment. What is the situation with that case right now? The situation is that there's no legal clarity and the rumours of arrest are mischievous to say the least. Uh, they're designed uh, by some individuals for political objectives which I don't understand. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, in about six weeks time, We've got to deliver the medium-term budget policy statement on behalf of government. That's where our focus is. And uh, the legal engagements with these entities will continue between lawyers on, on, on both sides. And hopefully we can clear the matter uh, sooner rather than later. As far as I'm concerned, there's no substance to it, uh, either in a legal sense or in, in any other sense. And uh, what we will be endeavoring to do uh, is to clear the air as soon as possible so that we give both South Africans and the world confidence that South Africa's institutions, particularly the economic institutions, are still solid, they are under good leadership, and they will continue to pursue the policies that has given us a good reputation across the world. One thing that's puzzled me is that some of these allegations date back to 2009. Surely they should have been dealt with long ago. Why are they being thrown at you now? That's a question that all of us can start uh, speculating on. And you've, uh, you've mentioned yourself, you've talked about state capture, you've talked about individuals attempting to loot the treasury of this country. How much water do you think that holds? Now, I think the real issue is that uh, coming where we come from, uh, as a political party, the African National Congress, and the kind of values that the Mandelas and Sisulus and Joe Slobos and Yusuf Dadus left behind for us, we have an obligation. Uh, to ensure that as we build our democracy that the 55 million people are the main beneficiaries of this democracy. Now, corruption is a uh, part of the economic system and social systems of every country in the world. So that's not really the issue. Uh, the issue is every country also has the obligation in terms of law and morally to ensure that the resources that a country has are spent on uh, and for the benefit of the vast majority, in our case, of South Africans, who still need jobs, who still need housing, who still need welfare, who need uh, assistance with university fees. And so what do we want? Do we want uh, some of this money to be directed into pockets of individuals, a handful of them? Or do we want them to be used for the public interest and the national interest? And I think that's what this debate is about. And it's a good debate, uh, because it helps South Africans to understand how these systems work, what are some of the implicit dangers in, in what's going on at the moment, and how they need to prepare themselves to guard their democracy, and to nurture their democracy, and to nurture the right institutions, um, so that public funds are spent, as I said, 
for the public at the end of the day. A lot of uh, commentators are painting you as this lone figure standing, uh, making a stand against corruption, making a stand against looting. Not at all. How far true is that? No, no, no. How can one individual do all of this? Uh, the public out there is very aware of what, what is going on, and every one of them want South Africa to work, they want to leave a better country for their children, uh, they want government to be effective in, in what they're supposed to be doing. And our job is to serve them, and, and serve them as best we can. And there are, uh, I'm sure, hundreds of thousands of people uh, within the public uh, service system. There, there are hundreds of thousands of people in the public service system who have uh, a very strong intent and moral character uh, and who want a developmental state, a state that is contributing every single day to the betterment of the lives of the 55 million people. I just happen to have a particular job that requires me to implement provisions of the Constitution and other pieces of legislation. Tomorrow there could be another individual in this chair and he or she will have the same obligation because the, the, the Constitution is still there and the laws are still there. One question also people are asking is, what is your relationship with President Jacob Zuma? You recently flew with him to the G20 in China. What is your relationship with the President? No, I think we make too much out of these relationship questions. He's the head of state. I serve at his pleasure like any other minister does. And uh, we are obliged to ensure that we work in the interests of the country, which is what we do. How close do you think this country is, South Africa, <coughs> of falling into junk status in the next six months? Now, that's a magical question. Um, the ratings agencies begin to visit us in a short while. And uh, we worked very well with business, labor, and other constituencies in the first half of the year. We would like to translate that, and we have a meeting later this week, uh, into the second half of the year. And uh, we would like as many role players in South Africa as possible to join us. Uh, in this uh, uh, venture because it's quite crucial to keep ourselves at the investment grade level. And all I can say is that we will do our utmost best uh, together with all the partners that we are working on and uh, that our detractors should actually understand that this is for the benefit of all the people of South Africa, not just for a particular business group or a particular government group. And uh, we've got to embrace a lot more keenly uh, the national interest and, and the importance of keeping ourselves as an attractive destination uh, for investments, both portfolio investments and fixed investments, uh, because that's the way in which we can assure the young people of South Africa that they have a future here. Well, you promised in February <coughs> to get the budget deficit down to 2.9% by the end of 2017-2018. How is that very difficult job going? It's tough because the growth is lower than we predicted uh, at 0 0.9 in February. Uh, that will have an impact on the revenue situation. So in six weeks' time, we'll give you the numbers as we, as we understand them uh, going, going into the future. But it's going to be a tough call. Uh, however, government is very committed to keeping its uh, fiscal commitments, as we've always done, and uh, hopefully we can do that again. A lot of people are still saying perhaps question, you should uh, take perhaps a bigger axe uh, <coughs> to things like civil service and public spending, particularly SAA, the um, loss-making national airline. Uh, what but, do you but remember, at the moment, all we're doing is giving a, a guarantee to SAA. We're not putting cash into it. When, when there's a proper management team and a proper strategy available, we'll have to capitalize SAA like we capitalized ESCOM, for example, last year uh, to some extent and uh, ensure that it now has a viable path in, in front of it. So what, what is right about what you say is that budgeting is about choices. It's about prioritizing certain things and asking certain things to wait uh, for the future. So we should be aware as a country that uh, our, our situ fiscal situation is a tighter one and it will require more tough choices to be made. We've made them in the past when the recession hit South Africa in 2009-10 uh, and we'll do what is necessary again. What about a change in leadership, change in chairman at SAA? Wouldn't that help? What we have is a new board and uh, I think as a team they represent uh, many different skills. And if they knit together, the chairperson is a chairperson. 
uh, and she's there for a year to ensure that there's a proper handover between the past and the future. Uh, but far more important is a competent management team, confidence within the airline itself, uh, amongst the cabin crew, amongst pilots, amongst uh, their customers and their ground staff. Uh, and all of that is possible in the next six months. If everybody uh, is mature about what uh, we have in front of us and understands their obligations, uh, both to the airline and to the country as, as a whole as well. What about privatization of SAA? Would that not help? No, the P word we don't use in South Africa. What we have said in the budget is that once we've stabilized uh, the situation, we will look at a minority equity partner. Uh, but we have a lot to do. A turnaround strategy, a consolidation strategy, a financial strategy, uh, a new approach in terms of where does SAA travel and not travel, uh, which are the loss-making routes, which are the profitable routes, how do you balance them out at the end of the day. So the work is cut out for the new board, at least for the next 18 months or so. I'll ask you one final question. A lot of people around the world are asking what's happening in South Africa. We have ministers <coughs> appear to be conflicting with each other. There's a lot of uncertainty in the leadership of the country. What would you say to foreign investors from here to the United States? No, that, that's par uh, for the course as far as politics is concerned. You had uh, a, a, the example during the Brexit uh, period in the UK, where in one cabinet you had two different groups arguing for two different positions. And the one group lost and they left, uh, or some of them left, and the other, other remains. Uh, but I think as a, as a political organization, we've got very clear directives. Uh, from the organization that we belong to, the African National Congress, that we need to create much calmer conditions out there and that we need to have a unity of purpose in terms of what we need to achieve for this country. And we are certainly committed to ensuring uh, that we work in the national interest. And the mini-budget next month coming up? Well, that's, that's the suspense we're going to keep you in for the next six weeks. So we'll all be in suspense ahead of the mini-budget next month. That's the thoughts of South African Finance Minister Pravin Gordhan on everything from his own survival to the budget deficit. From me, Chris Bishop, the managing editor of Forbes Africa magazine, it's back to the studio.